All right, here we go. We'll pick up from yesterday. Get you guys some good work time today. Uh, if you remember, yesterday we graphed the uh, position function. We graphed the derivative function. Shh. Can somebody tell me, what did we do to come up with the velocity function? What did we do? We took the derivative of the position function. Then what was the velocity after three seconds? We simply plugged in three. We came up with 15. Make sure you put your label, feet per second. When is a particle at rest? That's when the velocity is equal to? So we figured out where is 3t squared minus 12 equal to 0. And so we factored it. Uh, we got uh, t squared minus 4, or 3 times t plus 2 times t minus 2. Why did we uh, just take the positive 2? Because we don't want to talk about negative time. It's not in our domain as it's stated right here. Now, this is an important part that people are starting to forget already. But when is the particle moving in the positive direction? That's where v of t is greater than 0. So if this is the graph, what does it mean for a graph to be greater than 0? Above the x-axis. So from 2 to infinity, it's above the x-axis. Now, if you look at the original graph, that's where the derivative, so you would have to look at the slope of the tangent lines, you know, wherever that is positive, that's where it's moving in the positive direction, okay? So, you know, please make sure you're looking at the correct graph as you do your interpretation. So this is where we left off. And we said, and I'm sorry you don't have a lot of room, you just have to kind of make do, but find the total distance traveled during the first eight seconds. Well, we need to figure out really three things. Number one, uh, our beginning position, uh, our changing position, and then our end position. So for example, right now I'm standing right you know, in the middle of these two, two tables. That could be considered a position of zero. However, maybe I'll start back here. That could be a position of, say, negative two feet. We've got to figure out where it started. We can't just assume it started at zero. So if we want to figure out where it started, um, do you think we use the position function or the velocity function? Position. Position tells us where it is. So when we begin, what time do you think we use to mark beginning? Zero. When you plug zero into here, what do you get? So it does start at zero. So at time equals zero, s is equal to zero. Its position is equal to zero. S is what we use for position. At what time does it change direction? You can look at either. I would like to look at the derivative. We change direction when the velocity switches from positive to negative or from negative to positive. At 2, right? Here the velocity is negative, so it's traveling in which direction? Left. Here it's positive, so it's traveling to the right. So at time 2 is where it changes direction where the derivative changes from positive to negative, where the derivative changes sign. So it changes at time is equal to 2. I want to know its position at time 2. Plug it into what? The velocity function or the position function? Position function. 2 to the third is 8 minus 24, negative 16. My end, the time is equal to 8. It says over the first 8 seconds, so I'm stopping at 8. Again, I need to plug it into the position function. 8 to the third, 512 uh, minus 96. Minus 100 would be 412, so 4 less would be what? 416? 416. So S is equal to 416. Uh, I plugged in 8 to my original function, the position function. That tells me where I'm at. Now, you can see that why did we use velocity? We used velocity to figure out when it changed direction. Now we're using position function to figure out where it is. This will be one of the very first questions you have on your test. Okay, and We're going to practice this today. So draw a diagram, and then we'll actually figure out the entire distance. Here's how I like to draw my diagram. Okay. I like to mark my start. 
So 0, that would be at time equals 0. Where did I move from there? Did I move to the right or did I move to the left? Move to the left. I'm at a coordinate of negative 16 at time is equal to 2. Then I move where? To positive 416, and that would be at time is equal to 8. So the motion of the particle looks something like this. Everybody okay with that? Let's now calculate the distance traveled. Time, or how far to get from 0 to negative 16? 16 units. To get from negative 16 to 0? 16 units. To get from 0 to 416? 416. 448, and this is labeled in feet. That is the total distance traveled. That is the motion of the particle. So you can see for most people why E and F are the most difficult, but uh, those are the type of questions that you'll get on the AP exam. These are the questions we're going to focus on to, during today's assignment. So I gave you one of the most basic examples I could, which is a polynomial that didn't require the use of our calculator. Now we're going to look at one that's a little bit more confusing. But first question, Claire. Oh. 0 to negative 16, and then negative 16 back to 0. Now, some people would say I traveled 16 back and then 432 forward, but they were still taking into account that 16. I like to always mark my 0. It makes this process easier. I'm less likely to make a mistake. And it'll come up on this ne next example. Let's flip it over. What's different about this one? Yeah, it's a, it's a fraction. So let's first sketch the actual position function, s of t. And I did this problem earlier today, so I have a little bit easier time interpreting the graph, but we're going to try to be as careful as we can and uh, talk about some strategies. Now, the reason why we're going to use our calculator pretty much on this one is because uh, on the AP exam, you're going to be required to use your AP calc or your uh, calculator in some of these problems. And so as I zoom standard, I get that type of a picture. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would like to not see all this space up here. Would you agree? It would be nice if we maybe got rid of some of that portion. So it looks like if I go down to y is negative 5, but up to y equals 1, that should be sufficient, shouldn't it? So let's do that. Let's go to a y value of negative 5, a y value of positive 1, and my x values, I'm just going to go back to negative 2, and then an x max of 10, since I'm only going up to 8 seconds, that should be plenty. So be smart with your calculator and try to get a picture for what this really looks like. And as you can see there, it looks like it levels off. Who knows if it actually starts going down? Regardless, that's the position. Okay? So, as you can see, it starts, does it start back of 0 or in front of 0? because I'm negative, right? So it starts behind zero. Finally, it gets to zero at this time, maybe at like two and a half seconds, it finally gets to zero, and it continues to travel. But we'll mark that on here, okay? And uh, so it looks like right about a little bit after two, between two and three. And who knows if it starts to kind of level off or what it does. So if this is our position function, it's where we really need to focus and try to connect these pieces. If this is my position function right here where I'm pointing, is the derivative positive or negative? The derivative is positive. Why? Because it would have a positive slope. So therefore, the derivative graph should be above the x-axis at that spot, right? Okay, derivative right here is about zero, right? So we would expect it to maybe cross the x-axis at that spot. 
Derivative positive or negative here. So we would expect it to be below the x-axis at that spot, right? So let's figure out the derivative, and then when we create the graph, we can ensure that hopefully we did the derivative correctly. So in order to find this derivative, what rule will I have to use? I will have to use the power rule in conjunction with quotient rule, right? So quotient rule says to find velocity or the derivative at this time, we take the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of the top? 4 times the bottom left alone, which is t squared plus 3, minus the derivative of the bottom times the top left alone over the bottom squared. We might actually finish this before we go to lunch. You'll be able to hold work time when we get back to work. Okay, so I'm going to combine some like terms. I have a positive 4t squared. I have a negative 8t squared. So let's make a negative 4t squared. Um, negative 2t and negative 10, that would be a positive 20t. Right? And then 4 times 3 is going to be my 12. That's all over t squared plus 3 quantity squared. Now, I don't have any idea what that looks like. And the fact is, is that the AP Calc exam is not going to make you know what that looks like. They're going to ask you to use your calculator. So let's go to our calculator, and now we'll type that in to our y sub 2. And our y sub 2, we have a negative, whoop, I'm going to have to use parentheses, negative 4t squared. Plus 20t, plus 12, divided by t squared plus 3, quantity squared. I kind of missed the top part there, didn't I? So maybe I'm going to go to my window and I'm going to back off the y value. Maybe I'm going to go to, say, 3. So that's my original, and then that's my derivative. Okay? So let's mark that derivative. Looks like it crosses somewhere right about negative 1, goes up to a value of about 2, and it looks like on my first graph it crossed the x-axis, didn't it? Okay? It, it did. Who knows where? We'll, we'll draw it right around, say, 5. But we'll be able to figure that out, hopefully. <clears throat> okay. Tell me something about this graph that would make me believe that this is actually the derivative of this. Tell me something about the green graph. That tells me something about the red graph. What is my position here, above or below? So that means the derivative must be, and is it? Yeah, at 1 I'm above. At 1 the derivative is positive. See that? Now we said that maybe it starts to flatten out and, and have a 0 here. This looks like it would cross zero around there, so hopefully we're okay, all right? So weird graphs, right? But the fact is, is that's what they'll give you if they give you a calculator problem. So let's make life easy on ourselves. It says, what is the velocity after three seconds? So if I want to know the velocity, why well, plug it into y1 or y2? y2. So let's use our table. And I'm going to type in 3 into uh, x, and it tells me that y2 is equal to 0.25. So v of 3 is equal to 0.25 what? What are we measuring in? Feet per second. Next, it says, when is the particle at rest? The particle is re at rest when v of t is equal to what? 0. There are two ways that we can find out when this particle is at rest, or when the derivative is equal to zero. This guy right here, we can figure out when it's equal to zero. 
Now, I'll show you two ways. Number one, the top uh, the, is, are, if, if we're wondering where it's equal to zero, are we concerned about the denominator at all? True or false? If the top is equal to zero, then the entire thing is equal to zero. True, right? So we just not want to know where the top is equal to zero. What can I do to figure out where the top is equal to zero? It's not equal to zero. What would you do? Doesn't factor. Quadratic formula. Do you have the quadratic formula in calculator? Take it out, type it in. If you don't have it, go to my YouTube page. It's a four-minute, two-second video on the quadratic formula. Okay, type in negative 4 t squared plus 20t plus 12. Uh, type that into your ABC. Uh, let's see what we get. If you typed in but there's something slightly wrong, I'll check it out for you. Anybody get uh, two values here? Negative 0.54 and 5.54. Excellent. Suppose you didn't have the quadratic formula. Would you like to see another way you could figure that out? I want to know where this crosses zero. So if I look at my graph, okay, and I, I could even change my window to try to make it easier to see, say negative one and positive one, as I look at this graph, this is my derivative. Does it cross zero? It does. How would I find that spot using my calculator? Second, calculate two. So I'm to the left. I move to the right. And, well, I, I right, but, but, you know, how would I know unless I had already found those points? You know what I mean? It would be hard to tell as it's sitting right there. So I press enter, enter on guess, and hopefully it finds that spot. Yep, 5.54. So see your two options, because, I mean, what if the top, instead of instead of x squared, what if it was x to the fifth minus 4x squared plus 1? Well, you can't use the quadratic formula, and there's no formula for a quintic. You have to use your calculator, okay? So we've got it. Particle is at rest at time is equal to 5.54 seconds. Particle is moving in the positive direction when V of t is what? Greater than zero. When it is positive. When the graph of V of t is above the x-axis. When is V of t above the x-axis? Uh, we'll start at time equals zero. Is it above the x-axis at zero? Yep, so we'll start with zero. So when? 5.54. Claire, you had a question? Because time will be positive. So for all of our answers, we'll restrict it so that we start with zero. So now we find the, the total distance. So we need to mark the beginning, we need to mark the change, and we need to mark the end. At what time do I begin? So at time equals zero, s is equal to something. I'm going to use my calculator in order to figure this out. Do I want to be looking at y1 or y2? y1, because y1 tells us position. It tells us where we are at. So I go to my table, and I type in zero. And I'm at negative 3.3. At what time do I change? When do I change direction? Yep, time equals 5.54. And you can see I typed it from the last class. Again, I'm looking at Y1, not Y2. And I get 0.36. And then at what time do I end? 8. So time is equal to 8. And you can see my position is 0.33. So we'll answer that question after I draw the number line. Where do I start? Negative 3.33, which is at, as you said, Maddie, times 0. Where do I move to?
I moved to 0.36. I crossed over zero, didn't I? So I'm going to mark zero because that's going to help me as I try to figure this out. That's at time equals 5.54. Sorry, I didn't give a little more room here. And then, where do I move from there? Yep, 0.33, which is that time is equal to 8. So you can see that the motion, start at negative 3.33, go to 0.36, and back to 0.33. So how would I figure out that distance? What would you start by adding up? Yep, the distance from 3.33 to 0 is 3.33. What would you add to that? Plus 0.36, and then what's the distance from 0.36 to 0 0.33? 0 0.03. And when you do that, 3.72 feet. Perfect.